So before I start processing for the day, I put, I don't know, as much as a half a cord, maybe two thirds of a cord I'll put on that deck. That's not quite that much there now, but, and then I have to sh uh, adjust my chain. It's a little sloppy. You can see it's just a, a little bit loose. So I'm gonna adjust that. Make sure that my guide is where it needs to be in the 40 centimeter mark, which is 16 inches. So there are two nuts on this side of the bar. Right here, I need to loosen those fellows up. And they're eight millimeter nuts, so they don't have to be very tight. 18 to 22 pound feet, traditionally, for a, an eight millimeter, 3.8 strength bolt. And I gotta pick that frozen soda out of that Allen key. Sometimes that's the hardest part. Pick the hard chunks out of that. For all intents and purposes, let's look at the same chain. I don't have much of a tool selection up here. I got everything I need. I got a little, a little handheld grease gun for the bar tip. I got a 10 millimeter and a 10 millimeter nut driver, a 13 and adjustable, a 19 and an 18 and a 17 and a 16 combination of ratcheting wrench. Just a few odds and ends. Actually, there's two adjustables in there, a little breaker bar, a pair of ice grips. Pretty much everything I need to keep myself going for the day. Phillips screwdriver. There's another little pick in here I kind of forgot about, a little dental pick, which would have been handy. Oh, I guess the ends are broken off of that. I'm going to sharpen them up for digging the frozen sawdust out, or the gummy sawdust out. I have a small pry bar. I have a claw hammer and a hatchet. These are my chains. These are to be sharpened, and that's sharp on that side. One of my two pickaroons, I use this pickaroon for moving the big blocks around. I use this pickaroon for helping the log come through. I have my eight-way wedge, my four-way wedge. Today I've got my six-way wedge inside. I'm going to be filling my big trailer later on today, so I'm going to make sure that I split that the eight-way wedge with that because it's going to a place that they like fine wood. Every cord of wood, I fill this bag with the feathers. By the feathers, I call these little kindling bits like this. I put them in there. And that's $6 more per cord I get out of every cord of wood just because I separate that one little bag out. Some folks wouldn't waste their time on it, but six bucks is six bucks. And uh, I won't use $6 of the fuel in this whole machine. So let's say that pays for the fuel on that cord of wood. So, and I always have a sale for, for kindling. So that gets put into my own woodshed, dries for a month or two, and then I can put it into my for sale inventory. So anyway, let's start this processor up. We're going to bust through a bunch of logs, fill this trailer with one cord, and then go swap trailers and uh, fill my two-cord trailer with 16-inch wood. It's a beautiful, beautiful Saturday morning. This is just what I like to do. I got somebody coming to pick up lumber at 11, so I got to keep an eye on the time. So I run my glow plugs just for a few seconds.
There, that took just a little less than an hour, including loading the deck twice, in order for me to fill this trailer with a nice quart of wood. If you're new to burning wood for a heating source, I'm not talking about an ambience fire or buy a few bundles here and there, or maybe even a face cord, which is a third of a cord. But if you're new to buying wood to heat your home, there's a few things you have to know. One, you need to buy your wood in plenty of time so that you can dry it. Dry wood is not something 
you buy. It's something you do. You need to buy wood from a, a wholesaler like me. Otherwise, you'd have to pay me to stack it here in the yard in order to, to keep it long enough to reload it back into my truck so that I can sell you dry wood. And about 500 cords a year that I sell, that would be cost prohibitive and I'd have to hire someone to do it and you'd end up having to pay that labor just the way it works out. So sometimes I get drier logs. If I get logs that have been cut in the winter um, or in the, in the fall after the leaves fell off the trees, then there's a really good chance you're gonna get drier wood because the sap is down out of the, of the trees. I can tell the difference just towing this trailer with one quart of wood in it if it's drier or, uh, or green. Most of my customers, I'd say 90% of my customers buy, order and have their wood landed in their yard before Labor Day and that gives them plenty of time to, st to stack it under cover to make sure that it's dry enough for them to use. Another thing you have to know, if you're heating and you're buying wood, especially if you're buying wood online from somebody you don't know, or you've never dealt with before, don't pay in advance. And I said that probably even in this video, you can get scammed so easily. Somebody's more than willing to take your money and they just shut their um, ad down and never see them again. So make sure, and I've had a, a guy on Facebook Marketplace use pictures of my wood yard, my tractor, my processor, and he was selling well, he said he was selling wood, but what he was doing was getting people to e transfer them half of the money for a quart of wood, and then they would never ever get the wood. So, I want to prevent that from happening. So, I'm trying to clean up a bunch of that garbage as much as I can. I definitely will uh, report that to Facebook Marketplace if I can. And I've shut a few of those sites down. I can't believe there's still people doing it. And I can't believe that that Facebook still allows those kind of ads without vetting it somehow that they're a legitimate business. But. Anyway, we gotta go check the fire in the sugar shack at the uh, maple syrup evaporator and get the sap from the back, the cool bucket to the hot bucket. And then we gotta change trailers around and fill the, the two cord trailer and have it ready to go. That's a full cord right there. I've actually already swapped the trailers, filled the other trailer up. I delivered one, the one load that I was just flaking it over as you saw me in the last video. So this is, uh, a day or two later, I had to stop for a rain break, but it's beautiful today. I actually made headway. I've accessed the wood lot where my oversized rounds are, so I can try that split force out maybe later, probably tomorrow. I've got some saw milling to do. Uh, my, you saw my old ram, my 95 ram, three quarter ton, it's off the hill. And I've got my 20, 2021, yeah, ram loaded and ready to go. I filled that trailer actually on spec which means i don't have a, a home for it yet but while i had a, a spare extra hour i would fill that trailer and that way it's ready to go as soon as i get an order i do have some places i can take it but i've got to, um, to be very careful because that trailer takes up so much room and i think that where i have to go with two cords i gotta make two trips because this trailer is just too big a behemoth so there's my truck beside me and there's the, the load of wood oh. That's a great two quarter wood right there. So anyway, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. I'm gonna take advantage of the sunshine. The sap is just running out of the trees like a faucet today. So I'm gonna make sure that we get as much sap possible boiled down. We collect about hundred liters a day when it's running like this out of just 50 taps. And some taps, some trees do four liters a day. Some do, you know, a couple of cups, but we'll have to find something else. But anyway, if you stayed this long to the end of this simple firewood video, I sure appreciate it. Over and out, everybody.